Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks to, to Rick and to Minister Milliken for that to very kind introduction. I feel like I should, it's almost becoming like a Monty Python sketch about everyone talking about how bad they had it with the weather, but I win because I was campaigning in two blizzards and minus 24 door knocking through three feet of snow. So uh, sorry, our California friends. I think it, <laughs> we had it worse here over the last week. Um, I am thrilled to be here at the Southern Alberta Recovery Conference in Medicine Hat as the newly elected member of Brooks Medicine Hat. And I couldn't be more excited to represent this area in the Legislative Assembly, but also to be the, the Premier of this great province. And Minister Milliken is quite correct. I made a deliberate decision to make sure that we asserted mental health and addiction as its own ministry and made a concerted effort to make sure my Chief of Staff was Marshall Smith, who you will hear a bit more from later. And it's part, partly it's because because I've got a personal story as well. My, um, my uncle, sadly, had drug-induced schizophrenia, and after the Pinoca Hospital was closed, um, after sort of 20 years of institutional living, he ended up dying on the street at age 55. And I, don't, I just don't want to see that happen to anyone else. I told Marshall if there was ever a, a movie done of, on It's a Wonderful Life, where he would be able to come back and see what the world would be like if he hadn't made some of the changes, along with the great leadership we've seen in the ministry. I think that uh, every single day, this kind of approach, the recovery-oriented system of care, is saving lives, and it's changing the trajectory for so many families. So let me tell you a little bit about um, what I've learned, especially coming down here, because I did do... Um, a radio interview when we were having the suicide crisis in Medicine Hat to understand what was going on in the community. I know that that is also something that got on the, the radar of our mental health ministry. Um, and one of the stories I have to say as I've been down here talking to people in the community was meeting Rick from our collective journey, journey. And he shared with me his story of struggling with addiction, how he found recovery. And he shared with me how out of that pursuit of recovery came this organization, which is built on giving back to the community and helping others to recover. And what I hear so often is that this story of recovery is not unique. In fact, many of you here today are in recovery from addiction, and I know that many of you are giving back to your communities. You and countless other Albertans are living, breathing evidence that recovery from addiction is possible. And that is a fundamental belief of our government. I was surprised to hear as I started talking with uh, those who are, who are in our government and in our ministries that that, that view is not shared um, across the board. I think it is one of the key differences between between the approach that we are taking here versus what is being proposed by so many others and why it's leading to devastation in other communities. Let me talk to you a little bit more about that because we truly believe that recovery is, uh, from addiction is possible for anyone. And I see it as our job to make sure everyone has an opportunity to pursue recovery, that everyone has an opportunity to build a better life for themselves and their families. Addiction is an illness that destroys individuals, it destroys families, and it destroys communities. And over several years, we've seen the impacts of this. In Alberta, um, we see it in our mid-sized cities increasingly. I'm, I'm surprised to see in Medicine Hat and with Taskman as well. We know the problems are well known in Calgary and Edmonton, but it's really a problem across Canada and across North America. And whether it be an opioid addiction crisis that we all know about today, or whether it's an alcohol addiction that still drives the majority of addiction-related harms in Alberta, the reality is that the destruction of this illness, it, when it's left unchecked, is widespread. We see that clearly in places like Vancouver and Seattle and Portland, San Francisco and Los Angeles. I saw the, move, the documentary Seattle is Dying a couple of years ago, and I was just shocked to see the most recent documentary, Vancouver is Dying. We cannot let that happen to our cities in this province. Up and down the coast, the West Coast, it's the left's policies on addiction that are causing this chaos and leading to increased rates of death, of crime, and social disorder. We saw this, uh, again, very clearly in Vancouver is Dying, when we got to look what is actually happening there. It's absolutely tragic, not only for the community that's dealing with addiction, but it's tragic that they're not offering a better solution to those who are suffering. And that solution is recovery. 
It's also important that we recognize that addiction is not just a social issue. It's also an economic issue. In Alberta alone, addiction and substance abuse cost our economy over $7 billion a year, with most of that being as a result of lost productivity and health care costs. And that's nothing to say the social costs to families and communities every day. I can tell you one of the first stories that I heard when I got back on the campaign trail in Edmonton was of a sale of a, a, a one of the large buildings downtown. It was a billion dollar sale. But when the um, principals came out to look at finalizing the deal, when they came out and looked at the danger that was on the streets at in the evening because of this unaddressed problem, they they said the deal the, the deal fell through because they didn't want the the women in their in their in their business having to walk into that environment. It is not an environment that works for those who are suffering from addiction, and it's not an environment that is healthy as well for the broader public at large. The case for tackling addiction and supporting recovery couldn't be more clear. This is an area where I'm extremely proud of the work that our government has done since being elected in 2019. Under the recent leadership of Mike Ellis, who now serves as our Minister of Public Safety, and now under the leadership of Nick Milliken, our newest me Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, we're tackling the issue head on. And with Marshall being my Chief of Staff, I think we talk about this issue almost every single day. It touches so many of our ministries. Our government is working day and night to build a recovery-oriented system of care and to make recovery a reality for anyone. We started by creating 8,000 treatment spaces to help Albertans struggling with addiction access treatment. That means over 8,000 more Albertans can access detox treatment and recovery services every year. Then our government eliminated user fees on publicly funded treatment. Under the NDP, Albertans were, who were seeking addiction treatment uh, were forced to pay $40 per day on user fees to access treatment, even if it was publicly funded. That means that even if someone was accessing Alberta Health Services' fully funded treatment center, they would have to pay user fees. And I will say that it is ironic because the NDP <laughs> likes to talk about making healthcare more affordable, and then they, uh, but they ignored user fees for treatment, even during a growing addiction crisis. But thanks to our government, more people can access treatment with no user fees. Families no longer have to choose between going to treatment or selling their car or remortgaging their house or taking their kids out to hockey. Next, we also knew that we needed more treatment capacity. So we're building new, six new addiction treatment centers in Lethbridge, on the Blood Tribe, in Calgary, Red Deer, Edmonton, and Gunn. These centers will add over 500 beds of long-term addiction treatment capacity in Alberta, which increases our treatment capacity by over 30%. And each and every one of these are going to be fully funded with no user fees. We've also been addressing the opioid crisis specifically by expanding Alberta's virtual op opioid dependency program. This is a game-changing program that provides treatment on demand for people struggling with opioid addiction. Thanks to the work of our government alone, uh, or our, our, our government, anyone, anywhere in the province can get same-day access to opioid addiction treatment medication with no fees and with no wait list. And it's because of the success of this program that we've been able to create never-before-seen partnerships between police services and health services to make sure that we treat addiction as a health care issue while also keeping communities safe. In a number of communities across the province, and including here in Medicine Hat, anyone who engages with police for any reason can access an addiction medicine specialist through the virtual op opioid dependency program while in police custody or right on the sidewalk. And we're also changing the way we do things once someone is sentenced in the justice system. We're currently working uh, on the process right now of opening treatment units within our provincial correction centers so that people can access addiction treatment while serving their sentence. And these are big changes that we are making to build a comprehensive system of care that actually helps everyone recover from addiction. We've taken these significant steps and many more because for far too long, addiction was treated with, no, was not treated with the care and attention it needs. And recovery from addiction was all but forgotten. The steps we are taking have already shown positive results. Overdose deaths in our Alberta are down nearly 50% from their peak last year.
and this is continuing the downward trend that we have seen over a number of months in Alberta. We've also seen significant reduction in opioid addiction-related health system utilization. We've seen a 33% drop in emergency department visits, a 31% drop in hospitalizations, and a 39% drop in EMS calls. It's also clear that while there's still much work to do, to address addiction, our approach on focusing on prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery is working. Now, the Notley NDP want, want Albertans to choose between treating addiction as a health care issue and keeping our community safe. We don't have to make that choice. I'm here to tell you that we can treat addiction as a health care issue and at the same time keep our communities safe, and we should never have to choose between the two. We are building recovery-oriented systems of care that are fair and firm and compassionate. They're fair to the communities dealing with addiction. It is, uh, we are going to be firm with the illness of addiction and the destruction it causes, and we are going to be compassionate to the individuals who are struggling with the deadly illness that is addiction. Our team firmly believes that this is a path forward for Alberta. As we move forward, we are going to continue building recovery-oriented systems of care across the province. We're going to continue focusing on preventing addiction from occurring in the first place by giving kids the tools that they need to be successful at a young age. We're going to continue focusing on intervention for addiction when consequences of someone's addiction starts destroying families and communities. We are going to continue focusing on improving access to treatment and rehab services so people can readily access the health care they need to pursue recovery. And most importantly, we are going to continue to show people that recovery from addiction is possible it is real, and it must be supported by every single Albertan for every single Albertan who needs it. We know that recovery from addiction is possible for everyone, and we're doing everything in our power to make sure that every Albertan has the opportunity to pursue recovery. Thank you for the work you do. We will continue to support you.